Hello there and welcome to my YouTube channel, Do You Like Me Craft? So today I'm going to have a play with our gouache paints. So I've put out a few paints. These are Atezia ones. I absolutely love with them. I have played with them on my channel a few times. Um, but I've done quite, um, I don't know, arty things with them. I've created quite... Um, what am I trying to say? Yeah, I've done like paintings and stuff like that, which not everybody might feel overly confident with. So today I thought I'd take the approach of, let's see how as crafters we can use gouache. And I thought we'll have a few, look at a few different techniques. And today I am going to look at just the stamping. So what I've done is I have put um, the gouache out onto um, a mat. So this is just one of these cheap um, sort of, uh, what do you call them, disposable palettes that you get from the work, which yes, I know are plastic, but, oops, mixed. so I've mixed my colours up a bit there. So I've kind of gone for yellows and greens. And I thought, let's look at stamping. So what I'm thinking that I've done, <laughs> that I'm completely experimenting, which is why I'm in my journal, I'm in my Jane Davenport journal today because um, I think this is the place to experiment. If you are not sure if things are going to work or if you have an idea or you're not sure, the best place to play is for your, in your journal because it's just for you. So I am thinking that first of all what I've done is put the paint out and that is almost going to mimic an ink pad. So I have put my stamp down into that now and it's picked it up beautifully. So I am now going to use the stamp to create a background and that has come out really nice so we've got the details there right, I'm going to pop that back down and try and lift a bit more up and I was just going to have a little look at a few different um, stamping techniques and then maybe create a little page with all the bits and pieces that we have got and I've thought of a few different ways that crafters could use gouache so I thought I'd make a sort of little mini series. So that's me, I'm going to save that for later, that's me um, stamped out and as you can see that has worked absolutely fine. I'm sure if I had gone for some dark, so you can see how crisp it is there but that's because we had that dark blue and um, it doesn't look as crisp there but I think that's, that's just the colourways. Now because we have used um, gouache which obviously is a water based um, product. Now if I start to spray different areas of it we will get it bleeding a little bit which should help to create a bit of an interesting background. So I'm just going to add some water. Maybe, might even, let's see if we can get a few drips going. There we go, that looks quite good. Now the other thing that we can do, I'm just going to pop that to the side. Okay, so that was the same paint that I've just used. I've just gone back over it with a, a brush so we don't have the stamping impression. And this time I have got my lovely circle stamps from Mama Makes and they were designed by our very own Natalie Bowers that from Crafting Out Loud. So um, I will ch um, pop, pop her channel link um, in the description box because she designed these. So I'm again just going to use this um, as a stamping element. So I'm just going to pop a few circles down the page. Now instead of sort of spraying so this time with my water, if I grab some water and just, I just want to ping it on certain elements of the stamp rather than do it a spray. And what we should get is get a slight sort of bleeding effect um, where it has hit the water. I'm just going to see if we can get a few drips again. Okay, and then the other thing we can do with our stamps, this would work like really well with a nice flower stamp or something. So if I just get one of my smaller brushes, and again we'll dip this in water, and we could just sort of draw the colour from where we've stamped and draw it into the stamp. Now I can see this really well but I'm looking at the screen and it's <laughs> it's not um, it's not showing up so well. So I'll maybe do that in a different colour but we've managed to create a really soft coloured effect just by pulling in the ink from where it's stamped and pulling it into the, the centre. 
So I've now got soft green circles because we've just pulled that colour in ever so slightly. And then if we want it slightly stronger, again obviously we can pick it up and use it as paint. Like so. And uh, just sort of deepen, deepen those circles. Okay. So once we've got the paint out, we can start to use this in lots of different applications. So we can stamp with it. As I said, we can draw out the colour. Um, I quite often used to do this with technique with stamps years ago when it was, um, you know, like with distress, with the distress pads and things. Um, I would do that and then sort of draw it out. And it was never quite strong enough to sort of colour the whole thing but then you used to put a bit of extra ink beside you and um, do that so um, and fill it in that way so it's just that, like I've done that so I've been able to stamp move it a little bit to soften it and then we can obviously use it to paint with now I had one further idea which let's see if it works okay so this time I again have used um, I've got this time used rosy and um, pearl scarlet and again I'm going to do some stamping now so the beauty of doing this with gouache is it has the properties of watercolour so that's where we're having fun being able to spray water on it getting it to move like a watercolour creating soft looks but also because it's especially because it's in a tube we can get put a nice thick application down to get it to mimic like a watercolour based ink pad but also it is more opaque so we can um it will work for this it's not going to be too soft that you can't see it so I'm just going to put that down now I'm thinking that this should because of the properties of it remain wet and sticky for a moment see now those have turned out really crisp so that's kind of what I was trying to show earlier so that's turned out really crisp so what I'm going to just try doing is I've got some clear embossing powder and I'm going to pop that over Okay, so I've just dusted off the embossing powder um, and put that away and it has clung so now we should be able to emboss this and we'll still get that nice lovely pink showing through so it takes a little while to the heat gun just to warm up a little bit there you go, it's been in turn now and hopefully you can see that, that has is just picking that up now and it's just turning now so i'm not sure how well that shows up on screen but yes we've managed to emboss using gouache because basically all you need is for something to remain wet enough um for the embossing powder to stick to it which is cool so yeah, we have managed to emboss with that. So okay, I will just, just stamp a lot a, a bit again. Sorry, because I just thought I wonder if this colour would end up showing what I was trying to say um, earlier about activating the colours. So it means that, as I said, I'm managing to activate that now and colour, draw the colour in from the edge into the flower itself. So we can get some quite. Um, interesting effects being able to to use that technique so what I'm going to do is take the embossed one that we've got because what is quite good is now the edges on this are not going to move so I just I'm just going to take a little bit of the color and I'm just going to pop it into like the center almost just at the lower half of the leaves or the petals sorry and then just, I'm going to just move it with water and I'll let it do its own thing so that we'll get a really soft look. But what is cool about the fact that we've embossed this is that line is not going to move. And then we've got that gorgeous texture as well. So I'm going to finish doing that and then I'm going to have a look at all the bits that we've created whilst playing. And let's maybe put it together in some sort of journal or something. 
Okay, so I've got a few different elements that I have created and let's see if we can do something fun <laughs> with what we have. So I thought I'll just tear this strip with the circles. I want to try and put a little bit on both sides. Um, what I may do is, again, another use for a gouache. So we might think, well, what's the point? Um, if we've got all the ink pads that do this, why try playing with gouache? Well, it's multi-purpose. Obviously, you can do this, but you can do lots of different different things um, with it. Sorry, that brush has got it's gone so dark because I had uh, black on it. Um, so now I'm just picking it up and using it as a... Let's put this to the side so you can see. And using it to distress the edges of this this piece here. So again, doing all of this with gouache, not with ink. So whilst I was stamping, I created like a palette um, and came down like that and that created a bit of a ombre look. So creating that with an ink pad is possible. There's, I mean, you, if you think about it, you can just use what you have. Um, but it is a way of sort of creating an interesting um, ombre look that you might not get as easily. Um, if you're just using inks. So now I've just used it there um, to colour tint the edges of my um, paper. So I'm just gonna, and then what I'll probably do at the end is once I finish playing today is I will spritz all of this with water and pop it down and create a mop up page in one of my other journals. I'll probably not do it in this one because I'll need to leave this page to dry. So it'll end up affecting. <laughs> Could end up damaging the page I've got, but one of the other journals that I've got, I'll quickly do a mop-up page. So, um, you know, we've we've used it effectively today, and we've created something for future reference. So, let's have a little look at what we've got here. I don't know if I want to put because um, I had thought of like putting the flowers by the circle. Do I want? It's just the thing with two page spreads, isn't it? It's um, trying to get it so it marries together. Yeah, that looks okay. Where's my black? I'm going to get my black pen and do a bit of edging down this side. <clears throat> Right, I'm just, just going to have to go for it because I don't want to end up faffing. As I said, this was meant to be a bit of a technique video, but then I thought, well, why not just turn it into a finished page? Okay, so I've just grabbed some of the Indigo Blue Slap It On Gel Medium, and I'm just going to slap it on. <laughs> Hence the name. So, getting close to the end of this. So I'll probably need to be getting myself another one shortly in the future. Okay. Let's pop that down there. Like so. Okay. And then I'm going to pop this one down there. And then we can see what we have. So anyway, I hope you find that a bit fun because I just thought, oh, I've been, I've done quite a few things with gouache and I've done little paintings and it's like I follow loads of you that, you know, enjoy doing your paintings. But if you don't and you're a crafter, well, hey, I just thought maybe I should provide something that's a bit of inspiration as, you know, these products are not just for artists, they're for all of us. We can all use them in whatever way and if we are, you know, using it in a slightly different way then that's okay there's not a sort of paint police it's about um it means it's a more versatile product so i'm sure the people that uh, <laughs> i'm sure the people that are teased are delighted because you know a different way of um using um the product now 
I'm just going to have a little shuffle through my bit box just here and we'll see what we can come up with. Okay, so I have grabbed a few bits and pieces that sort of go um, with my journal. I've got these um, rub-ons that are Jane Davenport ones. So this is my Jane Davenport journal, so why not? Let's just shove those in. <laughs> why not? If you're going to put them anywhere, then it's a good place to put it. So. I'm just going to stick them down. I'm not going to think about it too much because it's just going to be a little added element. Um, there we go. Now, I've got this tag, which I think is quite nice, but I'm just going to give that a bit of a torn edge because why not? I just like adding torn edges to things um, I think it adds a, I don't know, adds another element to it, that um, another bit of interest. So we'll do that. And I'll see, I'm just wanting to build up some, build up a few layers and see how we get on. And now as I have torn that off, I've now got a tiny strip left, which I'm going to use on the other side because um, that will help to marry the two sides up. So I'm just going to tuck that straight in edge under the torn edge of this. My iPad's trying to tell me something, so I'm just going to have a look. Okay, I've got this, which I think will probably end up becoming the main um, feature. So I'm just going to tuck a few bits of the paper under this. This was the paper that I was making my card with the other day so that was I think that was the video working through creative block so um, you might fancy having a wee, a wee look at that one oh, that's, so this is my scraps so this is thing I've got this little bin of scraps I might have mentioned this to you before um, and I try not to let it get too full it just sort of sits on my desk so when I'm doing things like this because journal play isn't for anything in in particular it's just literally me um, playing and today it was about experimenting with gouache I had the idea that I could stamp with it I was pretty sure I would be able to emboss with it but I didn't know for definite it could have been a disaster but that's okay it's okay to record that in your your journal and as I said and if all else fails with these with your journals you just slap Jess over the whole thing and start again so it's really not a problem whatsoever So I'm just going to stick that down. Okay. Right. Feeling a bit better because it's I now feel like we're filling the page. It was just looking a bit empty before. Right. I think I'm going to pop a strip of this down here. So again, we're sort of marrying the two pages um, together. I may get a bit of. Um, white gesso out as well just to sort of knock everything back a little bit or tie it together somewhat okay so we have that right now I've got my flowers that I made work. Okay, I'll stick those down. So normally I would shape my flowers and put dimension in, but this is um, an art journal. It's probably like where I work the flattest in this journal. Um, some of my other ones, I don't mind pulling pages out of it and stuff like that, um, you know, to make way for the bulk. <laughs> but this one tends to be, it tends to be where I do most of my experiments with my painting actually, and all my swatches are in this. So like when I get new paint brands I swatch them out in this book so this book's a bit of a random mix it really is sort of <laughs> like a traditional art journal that is literally where you play literally where I play and experiment so I could because it is an art journal note take on those lines actually about stamping and embossing with gouache um, because it'll be a reference for me um, now as to the, how that worked so that might actually be an idea that I could pop that down on that. And 
then it's kind of got your handwriting in there as well, which I always think is nice with journals. Um, makes it personal. It's funny, it's maybe handwriting is maybe not something that we think about too much nowadays, you know, because we can send messages and all of this sort of stuff. But I was looking through, you know, like trying to sort some space in my loft and stuff like that. And I was looking through boxes of old cards that I have and things like that. And I found some like letters from my grandparents or books that my grandparents have written in. And it's so precious because it's still a part of them I have. I have their handwriting. I was looking for my um, pen there and I couldn't find it so I'm actually just going to do what I just said there I'm just going to write um, what I was doing with it so there you go I've literally just written playing with Arteza gouache stamping and embossing so that's the thing I can look at that page now and know that you know that's what I was at that day right I've got a couple of little stickers here I was thinking I'm going to pop those on these little flowers just to make them a little bit more interesting why not Adds, a, adds an element of interest. Okay, and then I've got some of these over here. I'm trying to get the right the right paintbrush that I've been using. This I definitely think this tab is going in the bin after this because we are well and truly <laughs> well and truly at the end of so I'm just actually going to go for it. I'm going to stick. All of this is just sitting in my bit box anyway, so the, the sooner it all gets used up, the better. So I'm just going to try and fit as many elements as I can on, really. As much as I can get away with putting on. Right, let's chop these flowers up a little bit so that I can have them. I'm going around the edge. Like so. So again, I've only got the two of those, but by chopping them up a little bit, we can just make it go that tiny bit further, which is always cool. And then I'll maybe pop one up. Nope. Hmm. Should give her a no. <laughs> I'll pop it down here. Decisions, decisions, eh? Right. I really liked that side of it. <laughs> I'll just put that back there then. pause a second while I look at what I've got. Okay, I think I am almost done. I'm just needing to still bring the eye in a little bit. It's kind of like your eyes looking here and your eyes looking over there and somehow we need to make both those sides look one. So one of the things I'm going to do is just actually put something that's going to go across the two pages like so. I'm just trying to make sure that it will fold in that, that crease. See, do my swatching out. <laughs> okay. Right, and then I am going to, and hopefully what that's doing is bringing, bringing the eye into the centre a little bit. So I'm going to use I kind of want that side to be torn and that side to be straight. Sorry, <laughs> it's because I want the straight edge against the the straight edge of the page. Okay. And I think we're almost done. So anyway, I hope you find that um, a 
fun video. It's been a bit mixed. <laughs> we've looked at some techniques, but then we've also played, because I think sometimes looking at all the techniques is great, and it gives you lots of ideas, but sometimes it's like, right, that's great, well, what do I do with it now? So hopefully the fact that we've gone on to create a journal page, we can see how, what we create using these techniques, how it then applies into our crafting project itself. I'm just going to put a lot more glue down there because it's wanting to lift. I've got another little flower here. I think I'll just add up here. Just actually I've got one there as well. Why not let why not just completely go for it? Yeah. And I think that's as practically done. So seeing as the gouache is the star of the show, I am just going to pull back one of the temporary palettes that I had and as I said as soon as this video is finished um, I will be spraying those palettes with water and adding um, so I can just reactivate this with water absolutely perfect works the same as other watercolour paint and I am just going to pop some pink splashes to tie the green and pink together so the other thing I'm now going to do is turn my project because you will tend to find as you're splattering it will be directional and the fact that you've gone in both directions just makes it um, as I say look a bit more purposeful so I quite like doing that so I hope you have enjoyed this and um, I hope you found it useful if you do fancy getting yourself some um, of these amazing Arteza paints the link is in the description description box below it is an affiliate link it will not cost you any extra in the slightest but it means I may make a tiny bit of pocket money <laughs> so um, if you do want to have a play check them out they're reasonably priced and honestly I love them so if you have enjoyed it here please do consider liking and subscribing and I will be back again very soon okay take care then and goodbye